voice training. It's time for voice training. Voice training. Train your voice so you like it. It's voice training. Whoa. Hi. You know, um, this is a new setup for me. Uh, perhaps this is new for a lot of you too, but welcome to voice training with me, Bria. We're going to do a little voice workout. I mentioned before uh, the stream started, make sure you got to have some water to drink. Ideally, probably more water than I've got here. I'm a pro, so I can get away with a little bit less, but you are going to need a lot of water. Make sure you give yourself a drink whenever you need it. And make sure you are sitting somewhere safe and comfortable where you can have your back upright and your feet planted. Uh, one of our uh, first things we're going to work on in voice training will be our breathing and you need to make sure you're in a good position where you can be nice and relaxed as you breathe through all of these different uh, exercises we're going to be working on. And regardless of your experience with voice training, this stuff should be applicable to whatever it is you're doing, whether you're a complete and total beginner and you don't know where to start with this, which is a very difficult and frustrating place to be, or if you've been training for a while and you're just looking to increase, uh, you know, your voice levels to the next level. If you want to improve your the strength of the muscles in here, if you want to improve your range, if you want to soften things up, if you want to be able to go higher pitched, all of this stuff will help you with that. And we can slowly put together these pieces into the comprehensive system that I originally learned for my voice training. So, I'm going to have a little sip of water before we start. I suggest you do the same. We're going to start with breathing, as I always open all of my training sessions with deep breathing. We're going to be breathing using our diaphragm, the stomach muscles. I want you to take a breath in and feel like you're expanding your stomach like a balloon as you breathe in through your nose. So we're just going to breathe in. Shoulders are relaxed. And we breathe out through the mouth and you feel like you're squeezing your stomach in as you breathe out. Breathe with me on this one. Feel that stomach. You want your stomach to drive your breathing. The less you use your chest and all the muscles in here to do things, the easier it's going to be to take your voice out of your chest. So if you drive your breath with your diaphragm, the muscles of your stomach, then it's going to be a lot easier for you to relax as you speak and soften everything up and move lots of air, which is going to help you get higher pitches. So breathe in through the nose, push it out through the mouth again. Nice and relaxed. Again. See how my chest isn't moving up and down a whole lot? It will be my stomach that is moving as I breathe. You should feel like you're blowing out a birthday candle on this exhalation. You want to move lots of air. Be forceful, like a cannon shooting out that air. So let's try a breath. You're going to have your hand up so you can feel the air coming out of your mouth and hitting your hand. The more air and the warmer air, the better. Just like so. Oh, I could really feel lots of air on my hand. Why don't you try one as well? Deep, deep breath in. Do you feel warm air on your hand? Uh, try one more, regardless of how much air you felt, and see if you can feel even more air on your hand. Move your hand with your air. Whoa, blow it out of there. Try it out. One more breath, deep as you can. Good. Hopefully that didn't make you lightheaded. Sometimes this very deep breathing can make us a little more lightheaded. Have a little sip of water just in case that's what's going on. And this is something you can practice anywhere, anytime. Even if you're in a place where you can't be practicing your voice, you don't want to make any weird sounds around people, you can practice your breathing. It doesn't have to be super forceful. It can be very quiet. As long as you're using your diaphragm, those stomach muscles, keeping your shoulders relaxed and pushing out through the lips and the mouth, projecting that air, you're good. 
Next in line with this that we're going to do is an elaboration upon deep breathing, which is yawning. Yawning is something we all do, we're all familiar with it, and in this case, we're going to be treating our yawning as an extension of that breathing. That is to say, we're going to use those stomach muscles to push the air out as we make a little sound. Not everybody naturally makes a sound when they yawn, but for our purposes today, we want to. This is because when we make sounds normally, our instinct is to tighten up everything in here and restrict the airflow. And what we want to do is have air flowing at the same time that we are making a sound. Obviously, everyone is moving air as they speak, but we want to maximize that. We want to blow out that birthday candle. So when I give a yawn, I make sure to give it a bit of sound and move as much air as possible, like so. <sighs> See how I made a little sound there, but I kind of settled into some breath. If I have my hand up as I do that. <sighs> oh, I felt so much warm air hitting my hand. Why don't you try that? Why don't you try giving a little yawn where you make a little sound? It does not have to be high pitched. It can be something as simple as. <sighs> that was a reasonably deep yawn. I felt lots of great warm air on my hand. Why don't you try one and, and, uh, and see how much air you're able to move? And another. <sighs> One more. <sighs> Have a little water, just in case that made you a little lightheaded. I don't expect you to get any of this stuff perfectly in the first time around. This is stuff for you to practice on your own. My goal with these lessons and these workouts is to have it be a framework for you. You can look forward to this every week, you can tune in every week, and you can follow along with me every week. But at the end of the day, you need to be doing practice on your own when I'm not here. So we're going to work on lots of stuff that you can do on your own and practice throughout the week and then improve on it so when you come back next week, you can move on to the next thing or, you know, we'll take it slow. From yawning, let's move on to another uh, breathy, light, airy exercise focusing on moving lots of air. And that's going to be what I call he, hi, how. And that's, we're making sounds now, but we're not so much trying to make sound as we are moving air. You have to think of this almost like as whispering. When you whisper, it's very soft, but it can also be very breathy. What we're going to do is not quite a whisper, but think of it in those terms. It's a little bit like hissing as well. We're going to start with a ha, and we're just going to breathe out that ha sound like this. I'm not putting voice into it. I'm not going ha. That's, that's not what we want. It's ha. And if you have their hand up, Oh, feel that air. Try another. Two more. Last one. Don't feel if you're feeling a little tiny bit lost. Hey, is there a stream happening right now? Where's my stream? It said there was an error. I gotta make sure the stream health is working. Wouldn't do me well to not have a stream happening. Let me know if the stream is interrupted for you. I'm going to move on since this is being recorded. So even if the stream health isn't good, we all can still watch this. Looks like it's all good. We'll keep going. Good, good, good. You can never be too sure, especially on your first voice training stream. So we just did that breathing out Ha, if I didn't tell you, have a drink of water. Very easy to get lightheaded doing these exercises. If you have an, an, if you have, uh, an understanding of the ha sound or if you're having trouble doing it, don't worry. We're you're just going to keep on moving. We got to keep moving with this stuff. You'll get it with practice. All you got to think about is breathing, moving that air from ha. We're going to go to the next one, which is he. Like so. Again, see how that, or hear how that seemed a little bit like hissing, like whispering? You want that sense. And again, use that stomach muscle and give it that H sound I've been emphasizing. The H, that's for a reason. It helps us move air. 
try one of your own. And when you're ready, let's do one on the hands. I felt lots of air, did you? Try another. Last one. Good stuff. Have a little water. You don't want to pass out doing this stuff. If you're feeling a little bit lightheaded, this is good. This is what we want. The next thing we're after is high. Same principle. We're breathing it out, not saying it. We're not going high. We're going high. Breathe it out. Push it with your stomach. Put that hand up, see if you can feel that air. Good stuff. I'm going to have a little water because I'm getting a little lightheaded. And if I'm lightheaded, hey, I'm an experienced person at this. Maybe you're lightheaded too, so I don't want to push you too hard. Feeling good? Everyone all right? I'm feeling all right. We got one more of these breathing type exercises we're going to do, and that's going to be how we're going to go how. you should get the idea by now let's try another how. one more how. let's try one with the hand up feel the air how. Ooh, that felt good let's try one more last one i swear Good. I'm feeling good if you're feeling good. Have a little bit of water. And since this is a live lesson, let's review those sounds we just did. We did ha, he, hi, how. Four sounds. Follow along with me. You go. I'm going to pretend to listen. Good. Have a little water. And we'll do one last one with all together like this. Wait for me to finish and then I want you to try. And then have a bit of water when you're finished. Try all those at once. I'll wait a moment for you. Probably a little tired from that. Make sure you have water. Take a little breather. Just maybe do a few normal breaths. Don't want anybody to get lightheaded. I'll talk. You just sit and listen a moment as you breathe and relax. Keep your shoulders relaxed. The purpose of these types of exercises, all this breathing stuff, is not just to learn control of your, over your breathing, but also to learn to project your breaths so you can learn to soften up your voice. We're going to do more stuff with this breathy side of things in a bit, but next we're going to move on to some exercises that exercise the exact opposite, what I call the pinchy end of the spectrum. Tight skills, whereas those first skills were very much about soft, airy. This is going to be about tight squeaky, screechy, kind of annoying, kind of weird, kind of robotic, but there's a purpose to all this. These two opposite ends of the voice spectrum are going to be what we shape our final voice out of. We learn each of them in sort of an individual space on its own in isolation. And then once we've mastered them in isolation, we learn to integrate them. If you learn, if you listen to me speaking now, Basically, how I'm speaking is an interplay between soft, breathy skills and tight, creaky skills. And we'll learn how to put those together as time goes on, but for now, we're doing the basic warm-up strengthening exercises. So the first thing we're going to do on creaky skills that I find is useful is 
stuff to do with controlling muscles in here. If you have, uh, I like to call it the voice box. Some people get confused by that name. I don't like to call it the Adam's apple, but the steel in here that you should feel a bit of vibration. If you put your fingers on there, if you speak, you can feel that's where your vocal cords are. That's where a lot of sound is coming from. And we want to control that because for a lot of us, chances are if we have more masculine sounding voices, there's going to be more deep booming sounds going on. A lot of us are trying to avoid that. What we want to do is instead of having this very heavy chesty sound going on, we want to shrink it down up into the head. We want the sound to be resonating from in here and in here. And the way to do that is partially to do with controlling the muscles in here. So let's start with that. Uh, we just talked about feeling this as you speak. Now what I want you to do is put your finger underneath it. And we're going to try like a hard G sound, like a, a gif, gif, go, a cartoon gulping G. If you can do that, that is ideal. But if you just have to say gif, gif, not jif, gif, gif gift if you prefer you want that hard j j g or not g but g g you know what i mean as you do this hopefully you'll notice maybe your voice box moving around try and exaggerate that as you go keep going with it you may be noticing that right before you start the before you go into the there's a pulling back notice how i'm kind of pulling back my voice box we want to be able to have complete control over that and to be able to maybe even hold it so on a why don't you try one where you just go and hold it back there maybe you can even talk while holding it back there. It'll be a little weird. We don't want to be holding it there all the time. Not super so, at least. There's some voice uh, methods that focus on that. I don't focus on that so much, but we want that control. And if you're having trouble moving this around at will, don't worry, it'll come with practice. And if you can hold it, that's great. Keep working on being able to hold it, you know, enough to full hold it forever and ever. But once you have an understanding of how to basically hold it there at will, that's great. You understand the muscles we want to work with in here. The next thing I want to do is uh, Bugs Bunny sounds because we want to get stuff not just in our throat but up into our nose and our face. And I find the the best way to get people doing that is to do kind of like a, a Bugs Bunny like, what's up doc? You don't have to do the whole what's up doc. We can do the you feel that in your nose? I'm kind of curling my nose up here, talking in my nasally voice like some kind of weird nerd. Do you, if you're feeling this, keep going with this as I speak. If you're feeling this, you, that maybe starts to give you the sense of how to shrink your voice down, how to take it out of that booming chesty area and shrink it up into the confined face area. And the throat plays a role here too. When I do a real <coughs> that's now settling into my throat here. And we can learn to pinch off our throat and keep our voices from <coughs> dunking down into the chest. So start up with a <coughs> up in the nose here and settle down into an eh uh, in the throat, like this. Like that. Have a little sip of water, just in case that's a little hard on your throat. Uh, next, let us start with just the bottom of this range. We talked about nasal. We talked about throat. Now let's focus a little more on the throat. That, uh, if you're having trouble locking that in on your Bugs Bunny knees, then let's do Grudge Ghost. 
you remember that movie, The Grudge, spooky horror movie with a spooky ghost or in the American version, Buffy the Vampire Slayer has to fight the ghost in the house and the ghost makes a spooky sound like, uh, It's like a weird popping sound down in your throat. Can you feel it? Can you try one of those? Right in here you're gonna feel it, or maybe here, somewhere in this range. The, uh, it's gonna be kind of like a popping sound. I, I, you know, maybe I've got some kind of synesthesia or something, but I really relate it to Rice Krispies. Snap, crackle, pop, pour the milk in, they start, it feels a little bit like that in here. And a big part of voice training is sensations. As you train, as you practice these things, in any voice training you do, be aware of the sensations in your body that you're having as you make sounds. Because if you make a sound you really like, you're gonna need to be able to recreate it. And we can't always recreate it by ear, especially if we didn't record it. But what you can do is recreate how it felt to make it. So keep track of all the sounds you make. If you go, uh, keep track of feeling and where in your throat you have that. Keep track of what you're doing with your diaphragm, those stomach muscles that we're driving our breath with. Be aware of your body. Something a lot of us trans people maybe have spent a lot of our lives not doing because of dysphoria. Now we have to learn how to be aware of our bodies so we can make them do what we need them to do for us. Yeah? Let's try one more of these. Uh... This, by the way, if I didn't mention before, is vocal fry. Big part of women's voices for the most part. You know, like a valet girl kind of voice. <laughs> oh my god. It's, it's in there. It's in the vocal fry. So, uh. so if you practice this grudge ghost, yeah, that you're on the right track towards the vocal fry. You'll notice sometimes I finish uh, my speech with a bit of vocal fry, especially if I want to be bitchy or like, oh. You know, some douchebag intelligence. It depends what you're doing with it. We don't always want to have a tood with what we're doing, but usually, if I'm having a point of something, I'm going to finish with a bit of vocal fry. So, the other end of that, of course, is back up in the top, the nose. We started with the yeah, settling down into the creek. Let's start at the creek and see if we can go up into the nose in an exercise I call creaky door. That's where we're going to start with down here, the ah, uh, and move up into here, more like a ah, kind of like you're making the sound effect of a creaky door opening up, right? Imagine this old door, you're in a spooky old house where the grudge ghost is, and you gotta open up the door and it's like ah, ah, ah. If you can't get up to that ah, that's okay. Our goal here isn't necessarily high pitched, but our goal here is tightness in here. Don't think pitch, think tightness. And also think not going up in pitch, but going up in your body. Remember those body sensations. Tighten the throat to start and then you kind of move it up into your nose. When I reach that full peaking, ah, that's in my nose. That's all nose for the most part. I'm still clenching the muscles in my throat, but I've brought it up to here. When a more ah, uh, that's in the throat, right? And now we want a smooth transition between the two. Ah, 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 ah. I'm gonna give you space to try three in a row without me interrupting. I command you to go on this one. Very good. Mm, try another. Mmm, very good. I can definitely hear it for real. One more. Wow, that was the best one. You're getting really good. I sincerely hope this is making a bit of sense to you. This skill, the creaky door, takes a long time to master. Don't worry if you're having a little bit of trouble with it. Keep going with it. This is one of the most important skills, in my opinion. 
while we're here on Creaky Door, let's try another one. Uh, let's try Rusty Gate. Rusty Gate's same idea as Creaky Door, but without getting too technical about it, we kind of need to do both it and Creaky Door to cover all the different ways we make sounds and when it comes to speaking. So Creaky Door is the closed off version, or, or Rust Rusty Gate is the closed off version of Creaky Door. Creaky Door is this open sound. Ah! Rusty Gate is a closed sound. Same thing I'm doing with my throat and my nose and all that, but my teeth are kind of not clenched, but in like this, and it's this er sound. For some people, like myself, I had an easier time squeaking on this one at first. That's one reason why I like to include it in my training. But it also, again, it teaches us to make these kind of creaky sounds on the more closed off sounds of speech. So, yeah. Let me do one more. Have a little water just in case that's a little hard on your throat. I want to try one more thing. I don't normally do it very early on in training, but because of the nature of these workouts, it's not like a direct one-to-one, -one, I'm teaching you all my stuff. I'm trying to give you exercises for you to go practice. And an extremely important exercise that I feel, if you only have time to do one exercise, this is the one you should be doing. And that is going from this creak, these creaky door sounds into a yawn, like we were doing at the beginning, where we would start like this. I'm starting tight in my throat and bringing it up into that tightness in the nose. And as I'm coming back down, I release the tightness into a gentle breathiness, like we were practicing with the breathing stuff, right? So again, I'll show you. We want to learn how to be tight when we want to and loose when we want to. So that way we can control as we're speaking exactly what we're doing. So if we're able to say, stay tight at the beginning and finish tight, like an ah, ah, that's great. But we also want to be able to start tight and finish breathy with a ah, ah. We could also slight, well, I don't know if it's more difficult. We don't practice it as much, but we can start breathy. We won't worry about that one today. It's a little, it requires range on the breathy and that's harder at first. It's easier to go up on this creaky stuff than it is to go up on the breathy stuff. So if you can do that one, good for you. That's bonus. But for now, just try the ah, ah. Try one of those, try and finish breathy. Nice. Have a little water. Let's do one more of these exercises and then we'll move on to what is a little bit more of the meat and potatoes of the voice training. These are kind of basic warm ups, basic training exercises, but we can also do a little bit of speech stuff today too. But first, let's do what I call the R sound. It's the same idea as the rusty gate and the creaky door, but we're holding it in one place. Whereas in rusty gate and creaky door, we kind of like, we move around, right? The, uh, but with this, we're gonna just stay in one spot, clench all these muscles and keep it there. This, uh, it's like that er uh, sound, but we're holding it there. Try it with me. Uh, you go on your own. I'll go and then afterwards I'll give you space to go. Ah. 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 Yeah, hopefully that makes sense. You should feel a bit of tightness in your throat. If you're feeling a little raw, a little raspy in your throat, that's totally normal. That's uh, part of the training effect. Think of these as strength training for these throat muscles we were working with. Okay. Uh, since we're here, I don't, you know, who knows who's training with us today. If that was the level that was, you know, enough for you, if that was difficult enough for you, feel free to stay there. But let's go up and pitch while we're here because uh, that's um, 
just good training and it gives you an idea of where we're going with this. Remember, the goal isn't so much pitch as it is tightness. So as I go up in pitch, I'm going to keep staying tight in my throat. And when I no longer feel that tightness in my throat, I know I've hit what is called my falsetto. If you're at all familiar with voice training, you know that falsetto is somewhere we don't really want to be that much. It's funny, you're like talking up here like Mickey Mouse. Uh -huh. You know, we don't, we don't want to talk like Mickey Mouse. We do want to go to our falsetto sometimes. That hurt my throat. <coughs> Another reason not to go fal to falsetto. <coughs> oh my. We don't want to go to falsetto. But we do go there sometimes. But you gotta be ready for it. And for now, for our training purposes, we don't want to go there. So the moment you don't feel that tight feeling in your throat, you're probably in your falsetto. Just listen to me here. <clears throat> I swear I won't hurt myself doing this. <laughs> now, see, broken point. Lost my tightness. Have a little water. So you see how I went up step by step like that? Why don't you try one? Keep it tight in your throat and see if you can go up a couple steps and uh, stop when you no longer feel a nice tight clenching in your throat and it kind of breaks. Especially if you have a real like Ugh! sound and you're probably at your breaking point. Don't worry if you can't go up yet. That's normal. Just sustain this level. Let's try five reps. If you can go up five steps, that's awesome. If you can only go up one step and you have to hold the rest at a, that level or a lower level, that's fine. And if you can't go up at all, just do five of the same note, just for practice. This one. Uh. Ready? Try it out. Here's go. One. Two. Three. Four. Five. Notice the timing I'm giving you on that. I'm not making you hold it a super long time. That can be useful in training, but for now, uh, just like a second or so, that, uh, that's fine for now. In most of your training sessions, that's about all you have to hold things for. If you want to hold it for longer at certain times, go for it. But don't feel like you have to hold it to your absolute maximum so you're gasping for air at the end of it. You don't, don't, don't bully yourself like that. Have a little water. And now let's move on to making some sounds. So I mentioned we've got these two opposite ends of the breath and pinchy spectrum, right? Breathy, pinchy, they kind of embody opposite things and we want to eventually learn to bring them together. So today what we're going to do is cover some of the basics of those, those, uh, you know, opposite ends of the spectrum. We did all the warm ups and strengthening exercises. Now we're going to try putting it into a bit of speech. We're going to start with basic vowel sounds. <clears throat> the ah sound is usually the easiest to start with. Anyone can cover that. And uh, let's start in breathy. Usually I prefer to start in breathy on these things. It's a little less taxing and it's usually the one that is more difficult for people to wrap their head around. The breathy side of things is of course very soft, gentle, like that whispering we were doing. And it emphasizes moving the air. As we practice breathy voice, we want to have our hands up and we want to feel the air. We want to feel that air hitting your hand. We're going to do a ha sound. We give it that H because the H helps us move air. And we're going to take a deep breath in with our stomach muscles like we practiced at the beginning. And we're going to go ha. Not necessarily high pitched. It can even be ha. Airy. I felt lots of nice warm air hitting my hand. Why don't you try one? Take a deep breath in. <sighs> How'd that feel? Did you get some air in your hand? Remember to treat it like an extension of your breathing. It's breathing first, voice second. If you're sounding more like ha, ah, like you know, that's tight. There's tightness there. We want to be ha, loose in here. Try one more. 
you're getting lightheaded, have a little water. Let's try another. For the sake of making sure everyone understands the breathiness, and even for people who think they've got a pretty good handle on the breathiness here, let's try an exercise I call back-to-back -back training. Back-to-back -back training is where you do something back-to-back, -back, something that you maybe you have an easy time with, back-to-back -back with something that you are trying to improve upon. And the idea is the first thing you did that you have an easy time with will rub off on the thing you have more difficulty with. And they have to be somewhat related exercises. You have to have something you want to put from this one into the other one. So we're going to start, we can all breathe. We just did earlier in the warm up, those non-voiced exercises we did, the We did those earlier. Pretty much everybody can breathe out a sound. So we're going to do a non-voiced We're not trying to go ha, we're just breathing it out. And ideally, we have that air hitting the hand there, right? <sighs> yeah, yeah. So we're going to do that back to back with a voiced version where we're actually saying ha, like so. <sighs> do you hear the difference? I felt good air on both of those. And the goal here is for you to feel even better air on your second one that you do because you kind of primed yourself for it with the first one. So try it out. Do a non-voiced one into your hand, take a breath, and do a voiced one on your own time. <coughs> and then give yourself a bit of water if you are finished while we wait for, wait for anyone else to finish up. Take a few breaths. <coughs> Let's try that again. We're going to go. <sighs> Your turn. I'll go for an example. <sighs> now you take a turn. Have a little sip of water. Hopefully this is making a bit of sense to you. Even if it's not, let's move on to the next sound we're going to do. We're going to move on to A, a hard A sound, like a, you're a Canadian person. How you doing, A? Because we all say that up here in Canada for real. That's a real thing that we do, A. Eh? Yep. <clears throat> but we're not going to say A, of course, we're going to breathe it out. And, you know, let's try the non-voice version to start, just to make sure we're all on the same page. We're just going to go breathing it out. <sighs> Notice how I gave it that bit of H? The H helps you get that air happening. Just like the crazy Yakov or whatever on The Simpsons. Put it in H! <sighs> you go. Yeah, I'll give an example. You can try. Yeah. Now let's try back to back with a voiced version. So we're going to go. Hey, hey. Give it a bit of sound. You try. Good. I'll go for an example. Hey. Hey. Do you hear that difference? See if you can do it yourself. Let's do one more and we'll take a water break. I'll give an example. Hey. Hey. Good stuff. No, sir. You get to go. Now to have the water. Good stuff. Good stuff. Take a few breaths. Feel a little relaxed. Maybe rub your chest. Hopefully everyone's feeling good. Everyone's feeling strong. No one's too lightheaded. Nobody's hurting their throat. Just massage your throat. Take a few breaths in and out. Let's move on to our next sound we're going to do. We're going to do E. Like we're saying he. 
But instead of saying it, let's breathe it first, the non-voiced version. We're going to go... Why don't you try that? I'll give another example. Now you go. Let's try one more. Good. Have a little water. And let's go back to back, non-voiced with voiced, like so. If you're feeling tight and you're not getting that air, lower your pitch. I'll give you another example. Feeling that air? Make sure you feel it on your next try here. One more. I'll give you a little example. Last one. Good. Have a little sip of water. Remember to try and feel that breath on your hand. You want to push that air out with those stomach muscles. <clears throat> Next sound we're going to do is I, like we're saying hi, because we give it an H. Put it in H. We're going to go <sighs> on the non-voiced version first. Just breathe it out. Yeah. I'll give you another example. Your turn. Let's do one more with our hand out. Feel the air on your hand. Good. Have a little water just in case you're lightheaded. And uh, let's move on to the back to back of high non voiced with high voice, like so. Yeah, right? Do you hear the difference? You try it out. I'll give you another example. Hi. Hi. Yeah. Let's maybe do one more. I'll give an example first. Have a little water when you're done. Take a breath, couple breaths in and out. And the last sound we're going to do is breathy ho. We did in the non voice stuff before how. Let's try and make it into ho, which is a little more of a natural vowel sound. It's a little more difficult, but it's going to translate more directly into our speech. Yeah? So we'll try non-voice like so. <sighs> Just breathing it out. <clears throat> I'll give you another example. <sighs> you go, yeah? I'll give an example. <sighs> you go. We'll do one more of these into our hand. Feel that air on your hand. Take a little breath and then we'll do back to back. We're going to go like so, non-voiced, voiced. Feel that air, you go. I'll give you an example again. Good stuff, good stuff. And I'll give you an example in a moment. Oh. Oh. 
your turn. We'll do one more of these. I'll give you an example first. Good stuff. Have a little water. Hopefully you're getting an idea of how to say these basic vowel sounds in a breathy voice. Remember, the goal is to move air. So if you're not feeling much air in your hand, that probably means you're in your falsetto, which means you need to lower your pitch. You do not need to uh, impress me or anybody else by going, because ah, you're probably going to go into your falsetto. If you have to go, oh, oh, oh. As long as you're moving air, feeling that air on your hand, this is good. You don't need to go high pitched first. You need to get technique first and then pitch will follow you from there. Yeah? Take a couple breaths. We're going to wrap up in just a moment. We're going to finish off with one more exercise, which is going to be those vowel sounds, but in what I call the pinchy voice, which is usually a little more intuitive and easier for people because it involves tightening up rather than relaxing. Most people have a hard time relaxing, but we don't have much difficulty tightening up. Just like most people know how to do some kind of sit-ups or push-ups, they can move, they can use their bodies in a hard way, but ask them to do some yoga and stretch out and relax. We're going to be a little tight most of the time. Most people aren't going to be used to doing that. So this is the same way. Our voices are usually naturally tight and it's difficult for them to learn to relax, but we also need to do a bit of tight stuff for them too. So we're going to do that. We're going to start with this ah sound. Now, because we're going to do it in pinchy, we don't have to move air, which means we don't have to worry about giving it the H. <clears throat> we don't need to have our hand up. What we need to focus on is tightening those muscles in the throat, like when we did those other warm-up exercises. And we want to put it into our nose, like when we did the Bugs Bunny sound, right? It's going to sound like this. <clears throat> the ah sound will go... Ah! It's very tight, very buzzy, like an insect or a robot. <coughs> I'm going to have a little water. And then I'll give you another example. <clears throat> We're going to go. Ah! Tight. You shouldn't feel it so much in your chest as you should in your throat and the back of your mouth. I'll give you one more example. Ah! And now if you haven't already, follow along with one. Yeah. Let's go a couple more. I'll go example. Ah! Your turn. Me, ah, you, me, ah, you, one more me, ah, one more you. Should feel that tightness, that ah, uh, creaking vocal fry. You should feel it up in your nose. You should feel small and buzzy. It shouldn't sound like a normal human voice. Pinchy voice is a very annoying voice. There's a reason we don't speak in it all the time. It's only half of a voice, just like breathy is only half of a voice. Okay? So don't worry if it doesn't sound normal or natural. It's supposed to sound weird. Okay? <clears throat> have a little water if you haven't recently. And uh, the next sound we're going to do is... A and pinchy A is gonna go like this. A easy, right? I'll give you another example and then I'll give you space to do it. A you go. Remember to clench the throat. Focus on your nose. You should feel like the sound is resonating in the back of your mouth, top of your throat. I'm gonna do another one and then you can go. A you, me, a, you, me, a, you, a, you. I'm going to 
going to develop some graphics to time people out on their repetitions. I think that will be of help to people, but hopefully you've been able to follow along thus far. Next, uh, let's do E. Pinchy E's should be very straightforward because E is a very tight sound. We're going to go and you almost it's almost impossible to put too much nose on this so really get it into your nose for your e especially i'll show you another example here and now you go now notice i am not going because that's not the sound we want that's not impressing anyone it's tight buzzy annoying not there's a time and a place for going e, and it's not right now. I'll give you another example. Your turn. Me. You. Last one, me. Last one, you. Yeah. Have a little water. And um, next sound we're going to do is I. Pinchy I sounds like this. I. Tight. High in the nose. It's almost like a combination of ah and uh, e a little bit. I. 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 Here, I'll do one more and then I'll give you space to go. I, I, you, me, I, you, yeah. Hopefully by now you're getting a good feel for pinchy sounds. Uh, generally in my experience they're a little easier for people than breathy. Uh, you should be feeling a nice tightness in your throat, hopefully not too raw. We only have one more sound we're going to do. We're going to do O, oh, just like we did in breathy. Pinchy O is a little weird because O is a very open sound. It lends itself a little more to breathy. So we really have to push with our stomach muscles and tighten our throat to get that pinchy sound we're looking for. But we also need to really focus on mouth shape. A lot of voice training actually really centers on enunciation. More femme people in general tend to enunciate more. It's a more female, feminine quality. But also for the purposes of voice training, being precise is helpful. Focusing on the sounds you are making with your mouth extends to everything we do, but especially to pinchy O. We want a really big O sound, like so. Oh, that way I get this really great uh, tight clenching while still a nice distinct O oh sound. I'll give you another example here. Oh, I'm really clenching off my throat at the end of it. I'll uh, I'll give you another one and make I'll give you space after. Oh, your turn. Yeah, yeah. Me. Oh. You. Me. Oh. You. Yeah. You feel like you have an understanding, hopefully, of tightness in here, resonating from up here in the pinchy. And in the breathy voice, you have a sense of relaxing, being loose in here, and pushing with your diaphragm to move lots of air out of your mouth. These are the basics that all you need to practice uh, right now, especially if you're brand new to this. If you're just practicing even just those warm-ups we started with today, you can always go back and review this video at the end. You can follow along again as many times as you want. You could literally follow this video every day if you want to and practice alongside with it yeah uh, you can pause it you can skip around you can do anything once this is up on youtube and uh, uh the goal though is for you just to have the basics to practice with we need to have a place for you to bring 
uh, you know, these basics up to a point where we can start putting them together into our final voice. And if you're somebody who's more experienced on voice training, you can't do the basics often enough. I do the basics, uh, you know, in my training because it's kind of the easiest place to push yourself. So if this stuff is kind of basic for you because you think you're really great at it, why don't you try adding higher pitch? Why don't you try holding it longer? Make it harder for you if it feels too easy for you. You can always be training harder even during an easy exercise. Yeah? But we got to start somewhere. And this is the place I start all my students off on. These vowel sounds. In summary, the main things we practiced today were A, A, E, I, and O in the breathy and the pinchy voice. And we also did our creaky door, the A. Uh, we did the rusty gate. Uh, and we did the hard R sound. Uh, we did yawning. And we did putting those together with the, the creaky door going into a yawn, the uh, Tons of material to work with, and you don't have to get anywhere close to mastering it anytime soon. This stuff takes time. You have to practice, ideally daily. Today, we've only trained for about an hour. That's all we need. An hour's training is plenty, especially at the beginning. If you find yourself hurting, don't worry too much about it, but don't push yourself too far. I don't want you to hurt yourself in your practice. But try to practice regularly. I'm going to be back every week, every Thursday, same bat time, same bat Twitch channel. And you can tune in and work out alongside with me. I'll slowly expand on this material. We'll slowly do more and more complicated things. But you need to keep practicing alongside if you want to make gains. Everyone happen, you know, goes through things at their own pace. I trained very, very hard at my voice when I first started out. You don't have to train that hard. But I ask that you do train. Train a little bit, even if you can only work out once a week before you see me again. So that adds up to two sessions a week. That's awesome. And that's part of why I want to do this regular voice training is that way at least you have something. Every week you have a class you can go to and you can train. And even if you don't have time to work out your voice throughout the week, Thursday night you can come and train with me. But ideally, more practice if you can. You deserve it. You deserve to have a voice that you want to speak with. Nobody deserves to have dysphoria. Nobody deserves to, to not like speaking. And it's not just a matter of wanting to pass as cis or wanting to be accepted by people. Not that these things are completely trivial. They can be very important for us in our lives. But the most core aspect for me when it comes to voice training and teaching people to use their voices is to give them a voice that they like. I want you to like your voice. I like my voice. I worked really hard on my voice and I'm proud of my voice because I made it. And I made my voice the way I want it to be because I made myself the way I want to be. And you are making yourself to be the way you want to be. Our transitions are about affirming ourselves. So this is one more step to that. You deserve to have the voice that you want to speak with and these techniques are how you're going to get there, hopefully. But it takes time, it takes practice. Just keep at it, okay? Uh, hopefully this has been informative. If you have any questions, you can leave comments for me. If you're part of my Discord, you can tune in to the Life of Bria Discord voice chat channels and ask me questions, uh, even during live streams. Uh, we didn't, I didn't want to get into that today because it's the first time, but I'm going to open up question period for training further down the line. If you want to get in on that, the vo like actually asking me a question in voice, then get on the Discord. Uh, there's a lot of ways to get on the Discord. The easiest way to get there is to support me on Patreon. Everyone who supports me on Patreon gets to be on the Discord. And uh, speaking of support, I do this for free because I, I want it to be available to everybody. But hey, if you want to give me a tip, that's always super appreciated. It really helps me out. Uh, I, you know... I don't do this for the money, but as an artist, any source of money that I get helps me survive. When you're an artist, it's feast or famine, and you got to be always, you know, on the go with lots of different things. And I'm not going to turn down somebody, you know, throwing me a little tip of appreciation for, for training. 
but the most important thing is that you get the training. If you can't afford to contribute, that's okay. I want you here training. That's the most important thing. Yeah? Yeah. All right. I think that's good for a night. Your voices are probably tired. You need to rest. Don't speak too much. Maybe make yourself a nice little hot drink if you can. Just relax. Uh, I'm going to let you go. I'll upload this later. But thank you so much to everybody who tuned in. This makes me so happy. Uh, this I feel like this first session was really productive. I'm so glad to see so many people tuning in. Uh, let me know what you think of this first session. And uh, I'll see you next week. Hopefully. Yeah. 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 I'll see you next week. Okay. All right. I'm going to go. Bye.